Picture this, a dimly lit room, the soft glow of a vintage television set casting an enchanting spell over the space. It's a hazy evening, and you find yourself in the company of Humphrey Bogart's suave charisma, his trench coat a symbol of timeless cool. The year is 1966, and you're about to embark on a cinematic journey like no other. The film, Harper. As the opening credits roll, you're transported to a bygone era, where the allure of detective stories reigns supreme. Your first encounter with Harper is etched in your memory, the plot's twists, and turns captivating your imagination. Perhaps it was the witty banter, the intriguing characters, or the smoky ambience that made it unforgettable. But now, let's dive into some intriguing tidbits about this classic film. Did you know that Harper was based on Ross MacDonald's detective novel The Moving Target? Or that it marked Paul Newman's debut as the shrewd private investigator, Lou Harper? These are just a couple of the fascinating facts that add layers to the allure of this cinematic gem. So, my fellow cinephiles, fasten your seatbelts as we delve into the world of Harper and uncover more hidden gems about this iconic movie. It's time to unravel the mysteries, one captivating detail at a time. In the 1966 movie Harper, a character named Susan Harper, portrayed by Janet Lee, was introduced specifically for the film and did not exist in the source novel. This creative decision added depth and complexity to the story, providing a unique element for movie goers. In the film, Harper, played by Paul Newman, drives a 356 speedster, a rare and coveted sports car. Only 140 of these speedsters were ever produced. Notably, a fully restored 356 speedster from that era fetched an impressive $300,000 at auction, highlighting the enduring allure of classic automobiles among collectors. Another notable vehicle in the movie is the Sampson's Limo, a 1959 Rolls-Royce Phantom V in excellent condition. This luxurious car could be worth well over $100,000 in 2020, showcasing the enduring prestige associated with vintage Rolls-Royce automobiles. These details not only add intrigue to the movie, but also offer a glimpse into the world of collectible cars and the creative choices made by filmmakers to enhance their storytelling. And that's a snapshot of some fascinating aspects of the 1966 movie Harper. A unique character creation, a rare sports car, and a luxurious limousine all contributed to the film's memorable atmosphere. Harper, Paul Newman's iconic Porsche 356 a speedster in the 1966 movie Harper, Paul Newman, playing the role of private investigator Lou Harper, drove a black top gray, silver Porsche 356 a speedster. This sleek and distinctive car became an iconic symbol of the film. The Porsche 356 a speedster was known for its elegant design and superb handling, making it a perfect choice for Harper's character as he navigated the gritty world of crime solving. The car added a touch of sophistication to the character, reflecting Harper's sharp wit and resourcefulness. Paul Newman's connection to this Porsche didn't end with Harper. In the opening sequence of the movie, he starts his day by immersing his entire face in a sink filled with ice cubes and water. Interestingly, he repeated this ritual as Henry Gondorf in The Sting when Johnny Hooker attempts to sober him up. Newman's commitment to this unusual wake-up method extended beyond the screen. He reportedly adopted this practice as part of his daily routine. Additionally, the house used as the Sampson estate in Harper is the famous Beverly House. This same mansion was later featured as Jack Walt's residence in The Godfather, further cementing its status as a recognizable location in Hollywood history. Harper is not only a classic detective film, but also a showcase of iconic cars and memorable on-screen habits of the legendary Paul Newman. From the Porsche 356 a speedster to the ice-cold wake-up routine, these elements have left a lasting imprint on cinema history. Harper unveiling the opening credits sequences in 1966. The movie Harper hit the screens, marking the first of two films featuring the character Lou Harper. The second installment, The Drowning Pool, followed in 1975. Interestingly, actor Paul Newman, who portrayed Harper, had aspirations to adapt Ross MacDonald's novel The Instant Enemy into a film. However, this project never came to fruition. One peculiar detail in the opening credits of Harper is the erroneous crediting of actor Roy Jensen as Roy Jensen. However, in the end credits, his name is correctly spelled, putting to rest any lingering confusion. Perhaps the most memorable aspect of Harper is its opening credits sequence, a creation of renowned screenwriter William Goldman. 
In this sequence, Harper is depicted rummaging through the trash to salvage used coffee grounds for his morning cup. Paul Newman's portrayal of Harper's dismay at the result instantly forged a connection between the character and the audience. Ironically, this captivating opening sequence was the last addition Goldman made to the script. Harper remains a classic in the crime genre, with these intriguing tidbits adding a layer of fascination to its legacy. In 1966, the movie Harper made quite an impression, but one of its stars, Shelley Winters, seemed to forget it entirely. Years after their work on the film, Winters and Paul Newman appeared on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. When asked if they had ever worked together, Winters replied with a surprising no, leaving Newman astonished. He reminded her of their time together in Harper, where they shared intimate moments on screen. Winters had indeed forgotten, and Newman couldn't believe it. It was a moment of both humor and embarrassment. Aside from these amusing anecdotes, Harper was a hit at the box office, not just in the United States, but also internationally. Its success resonated with audiences around the world, making it a notable entry in the film industry. Interestingly, the producer, Elliot Kastner, acquired the film rights to the novel Harper by Ross MacDonald for a mere $1,000. This investment turned into a profitable venture as the movie garnered attention and acclaim. In conclusion, Harper from 1966 left its mark not only for its entertaining story, but also for the unforgettable moments it created, both on and off screen. It serves as a reminder that even in the glitzy world of Hollywood, some things can be easily forgotten, but the impact of a successful film endures. In 1966, the movie Harper hit the silver screen. It was based on Ross MacDonald's novel The Moving Target, but interestingly, in the UK, it went by the same name as the book. The film starred Paul Newman, who was already known for his roles in The Hustler and HUD. Newman wanted a change, and he got it. He requested that the lead character's name be switched from Lou Archer to Harper. Some sources say this was because of his success with movies starting with the letter H, while others suggest it was due to legal rights. The name change stuck, and Harper became the name on everyone's lips. Screenwriter William Goldman penned the screenplay, and it won him the Edgar Award for Best Motion Picture Screenplay in 1967. This was his second screenplay to be filmed, and his first solo credit as a writer. For his efforts, Goldman was paid $80,000. It was a turning point in his career, setting the stage for his future successes in the world of cinema. Harper is not just a film, but a piece of cinematic history with a tale of title changes and a writer's rise to fame. It's a reminder that sometimes a little tweak can make a big difference in the world of storytelling. In 1966, the movie Harper became one of Paul Newman's standout hits of the 60 seconds. This film played a significant role in establishing Newman as one of the coolest stars on the silver screen. His portrayal of the title character, Lou Harper, earned him acclaim and further solidified his place in Hollywood. Interestingly, Frank Sinatra was initially the top choice for the role of Lou Harper, but declined the opportunity. However, he didn't let this chance slip away entirely. Following the success of Harper, Sinatra took on a similar role as a private detective in Tony Rome in 1967, showcasing his own unique style in the genre. One memorable scene in Harper involves the character Albert Graves, portrayed by Arthur Hill, engaging in a static tension exercise. He mentions staying in shape from his time serving in the Royal Canadian Air Force during World War II. It's worth noting that Arthur Hill himself had a genuine connection to the Royal Canadian Air Force, adding authenticity to the scene. In summary, Harper from 1966 marked a pivotal moment in Paul Newman's career, solidifying his status as a Hollywood icon. Frank Sinatra's brief flirtation with the role and Arthur Hill's personal history with the Royal Canadian Air Force added intriguing layers to this detective film. It's clear that Harper is not just a classic movie, but a fascinating piece of cinematic history. As we bid adieu to the world of 1,966 seconds cinematic marvel, Harper, I invite you to pause for a moment and let the echoes of this timeless film linger in your thoughts. This classic piece of celluloid has not just aged gracefully, it has woven itself into the tapestry of our cinematic history. Perhaps you were drawn into the enigmatic world of private investigator Lou Harper, portrayed brilliantly by Paul Newman. Maybe it was the intricate plot, the suspenseful twists, and turns that kept you on the edge of your seat. 
Or was it the unforgettable characters, each with their own secrets and motives that left an indelible mark on your memory? Now, as you reflect on your personal connection with Harper, I encourage you to share your favorite memories or thoughts about this iconic movie. Did it inspire you in some way, make you a fan of the film noir genre, or simply provide you with an unforgettable cinematic experience? Your words can help keep the spirit of Harper alive and inspire others to discover its timeless charm. Thank you for taking this journey through the world of Harper. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Share your thoughts, and let's keep the conversation about this classic film alive. Until next time, happy reminiscing about this cinematic gem. And remember, it was all.